Hello. Is anybody out there? We're about to get started. I'm here a little early. So I'm just gonna give you guys a couple minutes. I don't wanna start too soon. What um city are you guys tuning in from? Hello. Hello, Molly. Where are you guys coming from? How old are your dogs? I have a senior dog. Kai is my dog. He is 11 and a half. So he's gonna be moving a little slow on this video. Don't judge him. And I am here from Seattle. I used to live in LA, but now I live in Seattle. All right, Burbank, San Francisco, Los Angeles. What neighborhood in Los Angeles, Molly? It's a big place. Ooh, Cancun, Mexico. I'm supposed to be in Cancun right now on vacation with my family. And we had to cancel our trip because of this silly virus. And I'm so sad. I would so much rather be in Cancun than Seattle. Five-year-old dog from Southern California, Pasadena. Five-year-old Maltese. We got a Yorkie. Lots of tiny guys. Two dogs are turning seven years old. They grow up so fast, don't they? It's crazy. Ten-year-old. All right, Darwin, you're going to be in good company. Even though, do Australian Shepherds age? I'm not sure. I feel like they're, they have energy forever. Marina Del Rey. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. People are joining us, which is great. Um, so my name is Mary Tully and I am the owner of Tully's Training, which is a science-based dog training company. We are primarily located in Los Angeles, California, but we have a trainer in San Francisco as well. And we also have a trainer in Seattle where I live now with my wife and my eight month old baby. And, um, we've been in business for seven years now. And we do lots of in-person training, or we used to, but now we're doing online training. So um, this is a perfect activity for us because online training is something we've been doing for a long time. Um, it's actually a great way to work with dogs that have anxiety and aggression because sometimes the presence of a trainer can actually add to the dog's stress level. Um, so online training is something that we have been doing for a while and we really enjoy it. And uh, now it's coming in very handy. So um, yeah, just because we're in quarantine doesn't mean we can't still work with our dogs. So today I have a few activities planned. Um, we're going to be playing some games and working on some enrichment activities. Basically the goal of today is to give all of you out there some tools that you can use easily that you can involve your whole family in to help give your dog uh, a little bit of stimulation. So hopefully when you're on all of your different Zoom meetings, your dog is laying down next to you calmly as opposed to uh, running circles around you and barking and begging to play. So let's go ahead and jump right in because we don't have too much time. I don't want to waste any time. So really quick, I just want to remind you guys, I am reading this from a screen because I don't want to mess it up. Um, we have a contest that's running right now. So if you want to enter to win our work from home prize pack, what I want you guys to do is at some point during this broadcast, take a picture of your dog doing one of the activities that we're going to learn today. And then I want you to post it on your Instagram and tag at healthy spot and at canine natural, or you can comment on this Instagram during the event, which lots of you are doing already, which is great. And that enters you into our work from home prize pack, which is really exciting. There are details on your event invite, event bright invite <laughs> if you want to uh, see what you're playing for. Um, and also, I want to encourage you guys, if you haven't already, to go on our event bright page and RSVP to this event by six o'clock tonight. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure that after the event's over, you're going to get an email automatically, and that's going to give you some discounts on Canine Natural products. And it's also going to throw you a discount that you can use uh, for Tully's training. So you can get $25 off a private online training session with us. Um, basically, all you need to do is go onto our website, sign up for a consultation. When you're speaking with a trainer, you're going to just mention this broadcast, and you're going to get a discount on a training session. So pretty fun. All right, so let's go ahead and do some fun dog training things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play a game called Spot Says. So what you will need for this game are some is some type of reinforcement for your dog. I'm using treats. 
Um, you can use their kibble, you can use a toy, whatever they like, grab that, have it on hand. If you have an extra person that you can grab to play with you, this is a good time to bring in another person because it's a great two person game. But if you're solo, that's cool too. I'm gonna show you how to do it both ways. So this is what I'm working with over here. We got a baby and a wife and we got an old yeah. man. Uh oh. So uh, she's gonna try to film this for me and if the baby starts crying, then we're gonna set up the camera and make it work. So. Uh, Alex, you're going to be at filming now. Okay. Okay, so what you guys are going to do if you have two people is everybody is going to have some reinforcement. So Kai is getting carrots today because he really likes vegetables. And what you're going to do is you're going to call your dog over to you. So I'm going to say, Kai, uh, because he came over to me, I'm going to reinforce him for that because we always want to reinforce our dogs for coming to us when we call them. And then I'm going to ask him to do something. So I'm gonna use a behavior that he knows very well that's very easy called target. So basically what I'm gonna do is put my fist in front of his mouth. I'm gonna say the cue, which he knows, which is target. Target, he's gonna to touch my hand, good. And he's gonna get a treat for that. Now, the next part is Alex is gonna call Kai over to her. So she's gonna take some treats and she is going to reinforce him for coming over and then she's gonna ask him to do something else. So Colin. Kai. Good, sit. Lay down. Good. <laughs> that was terrible, he didn't even lay down and you gave him treats. <laughs> I'm not the trainer. <laughs> You're not the trainer. Uh, and then the idea is I will call him back once he's done eating the food off the floor. All the treats that you dropped. Any time now, Kai. We are not in a rush here. It's all about you. Kai. Good boy. So he's going to get a treat for coming. This time I'm going to ask him for something different. I'm going to say pop. Good. It doesn't matter what you ask them for. You're just going to ask them for something that they know that's easy and relatively fast. And what you're going to do is call your dog back and forth between the two people. And we're going to put a timer out for three minutes. And I want to see how many times or how many tricks you guys can get your dogs to do in that three minutes. Now, if you're by yourself and you don't have another person to play with, totally fine. What you're gonna do is the setup is the same. You're gonna call your dog, Kai. Good, reinforce them for coming over. You're gonna ask them to do whatever behavior you want. Sit. Good, reinforce them for that behavior. And then what you're gonna do is take your treat and you're gonna throw it off to the side as opposed to having somebody call them. So I'm gonna throw that off for him to go get. And then once he's done, I'm gonna call him back and ask him again. Okay, good. So you're kind of creating an invisible other person uh, just to create that space. And the reason why that's important is because I want these dogs moving. I wanna get their heart rate up. Um, this is a great game to stimulate their brains, but also stimulate their body. So I'm gonna put a timer for three minutes. Alex and I are gonna be playing that whole time and I want you guys to take your dogs and play during this three minutes and then at the end I want to see who got their dog to do the most tricks. You guys ready? You got your treats, you got your dog. Does anybody have any questions? We have any comments, questions? There was a question about if you have two dogs, um, do you recommend separating them to train them if they distract each other? Um, I wouldn't separate them for distraction because working through distractions is great. Um, I would separate them if there's like a resource guarding issue. So if having food around and them getting excited makes them a little snappy, then you might want to separate them. Um, but if you can work them together, that's great. It's a great way to build their relationship. All right, any other questions? Do I get some treats for this game? Yeah, you get some treats for this Okay, game. cool. Just do one at a time. Okay. <laughs> one little piece of carrot at the Okay. Okay. Alright, are we ready? Um, G.A. We, uh if you look at the comments, yeah. we are taking turns telling our dog to do a trick. Yeah. It, that's all it is, is just back and forth for exercise yeah. and enrichment. And we're going to set a timer for three minutes to see how many tricks we can do um, in a row. And it's a great way to exercise your dog inside the house. Alright, ready? You can use anything as a treat, as Brussels. Alright, ready, set, on your marks. Get set, go. Okay. Kai. Good. Target. Good. Kai. Kai. 
Good. Sit. Good. Hi. Hi. I'm not giving you any more, buddy. Hi. Come here. <laughs> Show him your treats. Good boy. Nice job. Kai. I'm not done. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Open. Good. I was giving him extra reinforcement. Okay. Kai. Okay, let me see if I can do this with my hand as well. Around. Good. Are you going to get this game? Good. Kai? Cool. Good. All right. That was faster. Oh, he like, gets why it. Why would I run when the same stuff is over here? That's way easier. Good boy. Good job. Okay. Go. Kai? Can I repeat behaviors? Yeah. Sit. Good. I dropped, I dropped some. Good boy. Good. Go. Kai. <laughs> Hold on, this is really difficult. Target. Good. How many are we at? Eighteen. Okay. Good. Sit. Good. Very good. Come back. Cut. Come. Lay back. Down. Good. You can eat that carrot that I dropped there earlier. Good job. You got a carrot? Yes. Okay. Cut. Good boy. <laughs> What do you do if your dog is not food motivated? Great question. If your dog is not food motivated, you want to find something else that motivates them. Um, so for some dogs, attention is really what they crave. For other dogs, toys are really interesting for them. Um, basically, you just want to find something that they like and use that. You could even use time outside, you could use going for a walk, you can use anything they like as reinforcement. You just want to make sure that you are finding something that's reinforcing to them and, and using that. And this might not be a game for everybody. Um, so if your dog is not really interested in toys and not really interested in food, this game would probably be pretty challenging for you to play. So you might have to find another activity. I'm going to hand it back to you and you can switch it. There's a, a couple more questions and I think it's just easier. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's see. And you can move. Yeah, cheese is great. Cheese is a great one, especially if it doesn't upset your dog's stomach. Um, Canine Naturals makes some really great treats, so you should probably check those out if you haven't checked those out yet. Um, how do you stop your dog from barking at people and dogs during walks? That's a very complicated question, and I would love to answer it on this very uh, short <laughs> class that we're doing. But instead, what I would like for you guys to do if you have questions that I don't get to, or maybe something that's a little bit more involved, you can go to our um, social media page. So that's at Tully's Training. And you can send me a direct message. I'm more than happy to answer your questions there. Or you can email us. Um, our email address is Tully's Training at gmail.com. So you can send us an email. Or you can go on our website, fill out a consult request form, and that'll get you in touch with a trainer. So um, we're going to move on because we do have a couple of things to get to. And then if I have time at the end, I'll come back and try to answer some more questions. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a popsicle for your dog. So um, a lot of people are familiar with, no, I got it. A lot of people are familiar with stuffing um, 
toys for their dogs. But sometimes you guys make it a little too easy and your dog goes through it in two seconds and then it's really not so helpful. So um, depending upon the energy level of your dog and the age of your dog, using some sort of treat that or um, stuffed toy, um, you can use it in lots of different ways. So when Kai was a puppy, for example, and he had tons of energy, I used to divide up part of his diet and freeze it into stuff, stuff it and freeze it into toys. And it would give me at least 30, 45 minutes of quiet time, which when he was a puppy was very important to me. Now that he's older, we just kind of use it for fun um, or if we're making Thanksgiving dinner or something and we want him out from under our feet, we'll use it for that. Um, but this is something you could definitely do on a daily basis. So I've got my toy that I'm going to stuff. Um, you're gonna wanna put whatever in here your dog likes. So my dog really loves fruits and vegetables um, and I kind of like to use what I have. So I actually keep a bowl in my fridge that I put like maybe like a raspberry that's a little overripe, that's not rotten, but I don't really want it. I'll put carrot tops in there, broccoli stalks, uh, maybe a piece, couple pieces of banana, if like my baby eats half the banana and there's some left over. Um, and then that's what I use to stuff my toys. You also can use kibble, you can use treats, you can use cheese, whatever you have um, that your dog can digest without getting sick, um, that's a good thing to use. If your dog's on a raw diet, you can stuff the raw food in here um, and give them the, their dinner that way. So I just have a couple of things that I'm gonna throw in. I've got some watermelon here. I've got some pieces of broccoli. I've got some carrot tops and some more watermelon. Now it's really great if you can layer this um, and put different flavors inside. So you could do, like let's say you have um, some Chick a couple pieces of chicken that no bone, just chicken breast from dinner the night before. Um, you've got some cottage cheese and you've got some canine natural dog treats. So you can actually layer that. So that way as the dog is eating it, he's tasting different flavors. Um, another thing you can do if you have a dog that's super active and has really strong jaws is you can mix um, some kibble in a bowl with like applesauce or cottage cheese or something, make it like a cookie dough consistency, and then pack that into the Kong. So for Kai, since he's kind of older and this is just kind of a fun thing, what I like to do is just put my fruits and vegetables in. I've got some peanut butter here. Um, it's best to use peanut butter that's just straight peanut butter, doesn't have any sugar or salt or um, any additives in it. And I'm actually gonna create a seal on the top. So I'm gonna seal that up. And this kind of gets him started. I also might kind of stick it in the sides a little bit, kind of mix it around. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is, normally what I would do is put saran wrap around the entire thing, um, and then you're gonna stick it in the freezer. So I'm gonna stick this in the freezer. Um, so like I said, it's definitely something that if you have a dog that has lots and lots of energy, um, feeding them part of their diet in a stuffed toy is a really great way to um, give yourself some time. So if you are having trouble with meetings at work, keeping your dog quiet when you're trying to talk on the phone and, and work with people, this is something you definitely should try. So you can even make like a big batch. You could like measure out your dog's dog food for the week, um, get a bunch of toys together and just stuff a bunch of Kongs um, at the same time and just have them sitting in your freezer. And then whenever you've got that meeting, you just run to the freezer, grab it, pull it out, and give it to your dog and now you've got some guaranteed quiet time. So it's um, definitely a good thing to have in your back pocket. We use them for dinner parties, <laughs> all different kinds of things. Um, and it's a great way to kind of use treats and leftover pieces of food that are safe for your dog to eat um, in kind of a fun and interesting way. Um, how long do we freeze it for and do we let it defrost? I give it to them straight to fr from the freezer. If your dog seems like that's a little sensitive to them, you could take it out. But to me, the benefit is to give it to them when it's like a frozen solid um, because then they just have to lick it forever and it takes them a really long time. So if your dog is going through your frozen toy, your frozen stuffed toys in 10 minutes, then you're either not putting enough in there or there's not enough soft liquid that is really binding the 
ingredients together. So you need to put a binder into it so that that way it is like frozen solid and it takes them a long time to get through. Um, yeah, and there's so many different kinds of toys that you can use. I know Healthy Spot has lots of different ones. Um, you can just kind of play with different um, materials. Some dogs have aversions to certain tastes. Um, I also know some people that will boil their toys in like chicken broth before, like after they buy them, because sometimes that rubbery taste can be a little gross. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that's a really um, a really easy thing that you can do. When, like I said, when my dog was a puppy, that was how he got most of his food during the day. So he never got fed out of a bowl. Um, he only would get fed via training sessions or via stuffed toys. So um, we have to feed our dogs every day. So you might as well use it as a training opportunity um, and burn some, burn some of that energy off while you're at it because feeding them in a bowl is like so boring. So you might as well make it an activity. Yeah, canned food is great. That's a really, really good one. And that's an easy one too. Um, yeah, baby food. I have definitely used baby food. Um, sometimes those little pouches, they don't quite finish all of it and you can't really save it for too long. So you can just use the extra and put that right into a Kong. Um, so other binders other than peanut butter, um, applesauce is a really good one. You just want to get one that doesn't have any added sugar or cinnamon or anything in it. Um, you could mix, if you have like an overripe banana, um, you can mash the banana up and mix that with some kibble. You might just have to try a couple things and see what they like. Um, I wouldn't use any cottage cheese or cheese with a dog that small unless you're just using a tiny little bit. Um, so you might just have to kind of experiment, but I would try applesauce um, and I would try banana and see if they like that as your binder. Any other questions? Yeah, canned pumpkin is good. Um, you gotta, gotta, you don't want to give too much of that because that can stop up their belly. Um, but yeah, a little bit of canned pumpkin can work as well or squash. Um, I'm in baby food land right now, so I'm just thinking of like baby food ingredients. <laughs> Um, so for the Kong, you're just going to use it, um, as a, as a puppy pacifier. So you are going to use it when you need to keep your dog busy and it's a great way to feed them their meals instead of just giving them food in a bowl. Um, and also if you have little babies at home, um, I have the, I basically do this with my child as well. I have, um, some cut up fruit and sweet potatoes that I keep in a bag in the freezer and I have this little mesh teether and when I need to occupy my baby for a few minutes so I can empty the dishwasher I just pop some frozen fruits and veggies into that teether and it keeps him happy for 20 minutes and sometimes 20 minutes oh my gosh you get so much done <coughs> all right so we're gonna move on to the last part <coughs> of our class today um so the last activity that we are going to do is we are going to teach one of my favorite games in the whole world and it is called find it so find it is, uh, people, some people call it hide and seek. You can call it whatever you like. I like to call it find it because that's the cue that I like to use. And basically what it is, is it is a, a nose work. So um, as everybody knows, dogs have incredible sense of smells. If you want to learn more about how amazing your dog's senses are once you quarantine has ended, you've got to go to the Science Center in Los Angeles because they have an amazing dogs exhibit and they go through all the dog senses and it's like crazy when you see the one they have on sense of smell. Um, but anyways, dogs have a great sense of smell and also dogs are incredibly intelligent animals. They're problem solving critters. And um, Victoria Soa likes to call America the nation of unemployed dogs. So I like to use the game Find It as a way to kind of give my dog a job sometimes. So. Um, he is exhausted right now because he's old, so that game really wore him out. Kai, come over here. So, basically what we're going to teach him to do is we are going to teach him to find something with his nose um, using his sense of smell. We're going to start with a treat and then we're going to transition to a toy. Kai, sit. Good boy. All right. So. I'm gonna set this up so that you guys can see me because my baby lost it. So I lost my cameraman. Okay, so basically what you're gonna do 
is you are going to put your dog into a neutral position, some un, you know comfortable position, a sit or a down. And um, if you have somebody that is with you, they can hold the dog by the collar. Um, if not, you're gonna need to use the word stay in order to give your dog a little bit of distance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask Kai to stay. I'm gonna show him the treat very clearly right in front of him. I'm gonna make it super easy. So I'm gonna put it down on the ground, stay. Okay, find it. And as he's going to get the treat, I'm gonna say the word find it. So he doesn't know what find it means. Um, I'm going to wait until he's giving me the behavior that I want, which is going towards the treat. And I'm going to pair that action with the cue, which is find it. Come here, Bubba. Good boy. Sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. I want you guys to do that at home three times. So you're just gonna put your treat in front of your dog. When they're going to get it, you're gonna say the word find it. Super simple. So very clearly right in front of him, find it. Good. We're gonna do it again. Sit. Good, stay. Very clearly right on the ground here. Find it. Good. Now what you're looking for is you wanna make sure your dog is going straight for the treat. If they're walking around and they're kind of sniffing and they don't really get it, kind of stay in that first step, which is step one, um, and don't move on to the next phase, which I'm gonna go ahead and do just so you guys can see it. So once your dog is making a beeline for the treat, you can go ahead and make it a little harder once they've done that three times in a row. Sit. So Kai went for the, three, three time, the treat three times in a row. So now I'm gonna make it a little harder and I'm just gonna take it a little further away from him. Stay. So I'm gonna put it right here. He can still very clearly see the treat. Okay, find it. Good. So he can very clearly still see the treat. Um, it's just further away from him. Good boy. Stay. So he's right there. If they're waiting for you to say okay, then just go ahead and say okay. And then as they're going at, as they're going to the treat, then you're gonna say the word find it. Stay. So the treat is just right there. Okay, find it. Good boy. And then as they're eating the treat, you're gonna reinforce them verbally, tell them good job. Let them know they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Over here. Sit. Good, stay. Now I'm gonna back up a little further since he seems to be getting it. Um, the thing you wanna remember is that you never wanna make a, a new behavior more difficult until you're sure that the dog has mastered um, where you're at. So since he's continuing to go for the treat perfectly, that's exactly what I want him to do. I am going to make the distance a little greater. Stay, make this a little harder. Ah, ah, stay, good boy. Okay, find it. Good. All right, so that time, he didn't know exactly where it was. He had to kind of look for it a little bit, which is perfect. Okay, so once you're giving them a good amount of distance and they're going straight for the treat three times in a row, then you can take it to the next level. Sit, stay. So the next level is I'm gonna put this treat around the corner. He's gonna see that I'm going around the corner, but he's not gonna be able to see the treat. So I've got my treat right here, putting it around the corner, just like that. So he can see where I am, but he cannot see this with his eyeballs. So that means he's gonna have to look for it, which is exactly what I want him to have to do. Okay, find it. So you see, he's not quite sure. Good, so that's exactly what you're looking for. You want that little bit of hesitation where they're having to look for it, but you don't want it to take them too long just yet. Because if you make a new behavior too difficult, too fast, then your dog's gonna lose interest. Okay, good boy. So we're gonna do this one more time. Go there. Okay, sit. Good, stay. All right. So this time, I am going to make it really hard and I'm going to introduce something else. So once you feel like your dog is really getting it, if you want, you can transfer this behavior to a toy. Um, 
I recommend using a toy that your dog does not have access to at all. So Kai loves balls like this, but he cannot have them free access because he will eat them. <laughs> so he only gets these on very special occasions when I'm playing with him and he goes nuts for them. Um, so he can see now that I've got this toy and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this in the next room and I'm gonna put it under something. So he's really gonna have to work hard when he, even when he sees that with his eyes, he's not gonna find it. And this is like way ahead of the game. I'm just doing this as a demonstration so you can kind of see where this behavior can go. Okay, find it. All right, so what you want is you want your dog to have to use their nose. So when you see that nose going close to the ground, that's perfect. Eventually, once you have this behavior completed, oh, he walked right past it. Perfect, he's gonna have to do a second lap. Once you have this behavior trained, you can hide this, you can hide their toy or their tree anywhere in the yard. Kai, don't go downstairs. Kai. <laughs> you can hide it upstairs. You can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, it's right here. I'm gonna let him cheat because our class is almost over and I'm running out of time. Yay! All right! <laughs> And then you want to throw them a party whenever they do find the toy. But that is definitely a game that is worth investing some time in and training. If you only ever teach your dog one game, teach them that one because it makes them so tired. They just really have to use their brain once the behavior is completed and it's like a real thing where they have to go look for it and it takes them 10 or 15 minutes. They are exhausted after. Like, I'm telling you, Kai is probably going to sleep for the rest of the night. Like, I don't even have to take him for a walk now because I played that game for five minutes. It makes them so exhausted. So it's a great one to have in your back pocket. Um, so really quick before we end, because it's already 530. Um, I just want to remind you guys, again, I'm reading because I don't want to mess this up. Don't forget to enter to win our work from home prize pack by sharing a pic of you doing one of these games or activities with your dog. Post it on your Instagram and tag at Healthy Spot and at Canine Natural. Um, or you can go ahead and just comment on this feed right here. That's a, like lots of you have been doing, which has been so awesome. Um, and also, I would like for you guys to make sure you've RSVP by 6 o'clock to this event on Eventbrite. That enters you to win a discount on Canine Natural products. and um, Or not win. You're going to get one. It's going to come in your inbox. And you're also going to be emailed um, a $25 off private training session with us, um, which is going to be happening online as of now until things change with COVID. Um, all you have to do is just mention this broadcast to one of our trainers, and they will make sure that you get your discount. Um, I think that's everything I'm supposed to do. Okay, uh, I'm going to hang on for another like three minutes and just answer questions. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Please make sure that you follow us at Tully's Training. If you need anything training-wise, we are still up and running. Our trainers are a amazing seriously like i am like the old boss lady i'm so out of practice my trainers are incredible they're so awesome they're so fun to work with um so if you're interested in getting some more help from us please um, visit our website www.tellystraining.com and sign up for a free consultation um oh thank you kai is the sweetest thank you guys so much for coming this was so much fun um i really had a great time seeing all of you does anybody have any questions? No problem. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, poppy seed. Oh, man. You're welcome, Lisa. So much fun. What do you do if the dog does a different trick than the one you asked them to do? That's such a good question. Okay. So um, basically what that means is that your dog probably doesn't understand what you've asked um, or they get a lot of reinforcement for whatever they are offering. So um, basically what that tells you is either you need to work on the trick that you asked a little bit more 
or you need to make sure that you're reinforcing the trick that you ask more. So a lot of times what we'll do is we get into patterns when we're asking our dogs to do behaviors. So we'll say sit and then we'll ask them to lie down and then we'll ask them to roll over and then they get the treat, right? So the dog is like, why would I waste my time sitting and lying down? I'll just skip straight to rolling over and then I'm gonna get my reward. So what you wanna do is vary up where they get the reinforcement. Um, and in my opinion, you wanna make sure that you're reinforcing the behaviors that you ask the most often, the most. So calling them over and reinforcing them for that. We call our dogs a hundred times a day. So make sure you're giving them treats for that. We always ask them to sit, give them treats for the sit. The rolling over and all the fun stuff is great, but make sure you're rewarding your dog for basics that they have to do with us all day long. Um, all right, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, shoot us an email, go to our website, tullystraining.com, head to our uh, account on Instagram and send me a DM. Thank you guys so much. This has been great. I hope you have a wonderful evening and stay safe out there.